Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning. Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. It is June 28th, 2022. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I am here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese. How are you today? Hi, Joe. Great, 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 great. So before we get started, I also want to remind people that if you have any questions, we'll be taking them at 1030. So please, if you have a question for Dr. Reese, leave it in the comments, or we've left the Zoom link in the description. And you could be live on air with Dr. Reese. So uh, we hope to get a lot of questions from the listeners today and uh, just wanted to remind you of that. So, so Dr. Reese, yeah, we're back to the book. I think some people have stage fright. They don't want to come on. I know, you know, I would click that link right away, but that's just me. You know, I'm one of those kind of people, but um, yeah, well, we got a good topic today. You know, last week we talked about the three macro methods of healing as described in the book. And we went over the first one, which is postural therapy. Yeah. And we covered the importance of the posture in your overall health. So what I wanted to talk about this week, obviously, would be part two of the second corrective macro method. Yeah. And that would be clinical nutrition. Mm. So a lot of people hear the word nutrition and they think of a typical like dietitian or going to your nutritionist. Do you know what I mean? Something like that. Um, but this is something more than that, something a little bit different than just specific diet tips and, you know, like a keto diet or things like that. This is an overall um overall method and it's completely different than you would say what a traditional dietitian or somebody like that is correct yeah pretty much i mean it's just it's all about testing and looking at what's going on inside you your biochemistry and there's 90 essential nutrients that we know from the pioneering work of dr joel wallach so right. That's really what we're, we're concentrating on is making sure the body is importing those 90 essential nutrients. Now with clinical nutrition, Joe, it's, you know, we can check now it costs money because the medical monopoly, they don't check your nutritional profile because it costs too much money. Yeah. I think we talked about this. They do the basics. They do the basics like calcium and phosphorus, but Right. They, they just, they're not checking your copper, or your zinc. They're not checking your lithium selenium. or your selenium. Yeah. They're not checking any of that. So uh, in clinical nutrition, we take the clinical approach and we check. And so like somebody might be low in essential fatty acids and that's causing, you know, five, six, seven, or even eight symptoms. Right. Right, right, right. So this, the, the, the step, you would take a test, uh, a blood test, pretty much, and determine where your deficiencies are. Now, are there specific, is it, is it more than nutrition? Because you talk about the 90 uh, essential minerals and vitamins that you need for your body. It's actually 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two to three EFAs. Yes. So it's almost like a formula, like yeah. if you were a chemist and this is pretty much all contained in your blood and then circulates and is distributed throughout your system yeah. uh, where it's needed pretty much. But yeah. the thing is, um, we used to get all of our nutrition pretty much way back in the day. I'm talking back in the day from food. So you know, the food that we eat, because we come from the earth, and we are part of this ecosystem, uh, does contain, in its natural state, most of the essentials that a human or an animal would need, correct? Yeah, yeah well, 
the most nutrient dense foods on the planet are animal organs. Right. And that's what our ancestors did. They ate the liver, they ate the testicles, they ate the heart, they ate the eyes, they ate the pancreas, they ate the bones, or they boiled the bones down into a broth. They used the hide for everything. The fur. Right. Everything. So most people don't want to do that. They get grossed out by it, right? Because a, a, a cow can feed a lot of people, but there's only one heart right there's only one liver so you know there's what seven billion people now on earth right you know there's there's not seven billion hearts hearts of cats <laughs> you eat cow. one a right. day or whatever right right so you know we're in a situation where and then our 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 plants are very nutritionally deficient because of corporate farming the soil is depleted, it's pesticides, yep. right? Yep. Factory farming. Yep. Right. And exactly. that's, the, it's taken out all the nutrients in the soil one, because they just keep refarming the same. So, and they're putting, they're putting, let's say they're putting fertilizer in there, but it's all artificial fertilizer. It's chemicals. It's not the natural stuff that is already in the soil. Right. So they're doing that. So people say, well, if I eat a lot of spinach, I'm going to get a lot of iron. Well, maybe that was true back in the day, but today maybe you're only getting half the amount of iron or that you used to get. Right. It's, it's really important to note that farmers get paid by the volume. They don't get paid by the nutrition. Right. So they grow a bunch of broccoli and then they sell that broccoli to the grocery stores. The, bro the, the grocery stores isn't checking it and saying, well, we need to see how much calcium's in it. We need to see how much vitamin C. It's not how it works. So broccoli and carrots and apples were healthier 100 years ago than they are now. Even 50 years ago, before factory farming. You know, realistically, that is when it was when it became industrial. So when you had family farms and people were supplying the food for a small town or a village, it was a different story than when you have to supply 300 million people in a country with food, Right. you know, and this is their solution. And, and I like the point that you brought up about how the nutrition, they don't test for nutrition, but yet when you go buy any other product in the, in the store, there has to be a nutritional information label on it right? right how much of this how much of that how much is it now even me being in the cannabis industry mm -hmm. everything has to be tested before it goes out to market right. and they have to show you what the levels are in it it's interesting that they don't do that for produce because oh. I, yeah I, and and they should it's an easy process i know that you just it, to test to do it you just take one and you just test it. It's, it's not a hard process to do, but yeah, those, uh, but those labels, they're just standardized and they're just, they just, you know, they print them on. Okay, and, they'd have to do it for every batch. Yeah. They, they literally would. And that's too much, you know, work for them. Right. right. Because we do see charts and things like that on the internet or whatever that say a broccoli has this much calcium in it and this much. And, and Ideally. You, yes. <laughs> and, and we get fooled by the internet because on social media, there's the memes that say, you know, the seven benefits of apples or the 10 benefits of broccoli Absolutely. or, you know, and it, it's just not true a hundred percent. So yeah, yeah. Apples are great for the lungs. They're great for the bones. They're great for someone with diabetes, but that's if you have that's if you had a great apple pure apples right and, and and you know here's what people don't understand let's try you say you are trying to work on diabetes naturally right you're trying to heal your diabetes you're not going to just eat apples if you just eat apples and fruits and things that they say are good for diabetes it's not going to work you need extra supplementation these days and i think that's what we're getting at regardless of what your diet is 
unless you are sure of the nutritional content in those vegetables and fruits that you're eating, yep. you don't know that you're getting the right amount of vitamins and minerals that you absolutely need. Yeah, you, you know, know. that's. What, it, yeah. And I would say the same thing goes with with animal foods too. Even if you're, even if someone was eating animal organs, which is becoming more popular again, it's kind of coming back around. But even then, you don't really know if you're getting all ninety essential nutrients. What was that animal fed? How was it raised? Right? Were there antibiotics involved? Right. You know, you almost it's 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 kind of if you want to control it, you almost have to raise your own livestock so you know exactly what you're feeding them and you can test them and you almost have to grow your own food yeah. so you can control what's in the soil and you know exactly like that, which is how life used to be, right? People I'd rather to... just drink this. <laughs> Right. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, you talk, you know, we talk about vitamins. Everybody knows what vitamins are, right? We have our, everybody takes vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin A, but what about minerals? I mean, yeah. I think people, um, they disregard or they don't disregard, but they don't think they understand that I, vitamins I, and minerals go hand in hand. I know where you're going with this. And I just want to say that it's just another social engineering to the people we're, we're programmed to only think about vitamins. That's why, um, for example, when somebody comes to me or us and says, you know, I want to get on a nutritional protocol and they may ask, well, how much is it? You right. tell them the cost. And of course the cost is it, it, it blindsides some people. You know, and of course it depends on what your symptoms are. If you have a lot of symptoms, it's going to cost more. But a, a big response, Joe, is what? For some vitamins? <laughs> yeah. And so right there, that's how we know it's social engineering because they're using the term vitamins. Right. But there's only 16 vitamins out right. of 90 essential nutrients. So that, yeah, so the, the, the formula itself is not just vitamins no there's six like you said earlier there's 60 minerals and minerals i mean you can die literally I, from yes. mineral deficiency right and plants and die from mineral mineral deficiency all the time all the time if the soil doesn't have the right minerals in it and animals as well and so this is why you know they give salt licks to the cows and the horses, they, they can go out there and they can lick the salt because in a, a good natural salt, there's trace minerals. So right. the animals take the salt as much as they need. They don't overdo it. Right. Just like you don't overdo it because too much salt doesn't taste good. Yeah, right. It's not good for your tongue. But salt is, is, you know, needed for the body, but you're not going to overdo it because your, your mouth is going to say, no, 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 no more. <laughs> right. Just like right. hot sauce, you know, you're not going to overdo hot sauce either, you know? Yeah. So the body knows what it's doing. Exactly. Right. Right. So what would you say? Okay. So minerals, and I do, I get what you say. You can die from lack of minerals more probably they're more important i would say than vitamins because i had an incident with my mother mm. um after she had had her surgery and she wasn't feeling well and she had taken a blood test on a friday i literally got an emergency call two days later when they got the results and said get her into the hospital right now her calcium levels they're at fatal levels. Mm. That's high, why high or low, 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 mm. low, low, low calcium. And when, and, yeah, when we're deficient in ca dude, calcium, there's 200 bones in the body, right? We need a lot of calcium for this machine to keep moving. If you're, if you're deficient in calcium, that can bring forth up to 150 diseases. Right. That is a lot. And, and what would you say, okay, is the most common when you, you know, you do these clinical tests, 
what is the most common mineral deficiency amongst people? I've heard it's magnesium, uh, you know, but I've heard it's, you know, what would you say when you're testing people is the most common one that you have found to be? Um, I don't know what the most common one is. I mean, 60 is a lot, but, you know, selenium is, is the big one that nobody's really thinking about, but it, it brings forth a lot of symptoms. People with muscular dystrophy are born with selenium deficiency. And, you know, this is what Dr. Wallach proved. And one of the reasons why Jerry Lewis quit the telethon. Um, you know, it's no selenium, uh, man. I mean, it can really, it can really get tricky, you know, and essential fatty acids and selenium. If you go low in both of those, you're looking at acne, you're looking at ALS, you're looking at Alzheimer's, you know, potential blood clots. So, I mean, to answer your question, I maybe essential fatty acids might be the one that really people aren't thinking of, you know? But again, there's 60 of them, 16 vitamins on top of that, 12 amino acids, two or three fatty acids. So it's, it's, it's quite a lot, you know, but hey, Joe, we got you back. <laughs> well, you were the one, you were froze. Ah, I don't know. I was talking. I know, but you were froze on my end. So it had to be something on you because I was still talking. But either way, we're back. So let's just get on with our. Yeah, I answered, I answered the question. So. All right. So what was it? What else you got for me? <laughs> well, what was the deficiency? I think essential fatty acids is the big, the big one. It's not, not minerals, but it's, it's the one that slips down on people, especially plant-based people. Because they won't take fish oil or they won't take anything that comes from an animal. Right. And we talked about this last week, how the uh, plant-based EFAs are not quite as um, full as the, uh, you know, fish-based EFAs. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, well, all right. So I mentioned that um, magnesium and selenium. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you told me that selenium, a selenium deficiency can cause quite a few uh, different health problems that people would never have thought yeah. that they would, right? You know what's another one though? Chromium. Chromium, and people don't, that's like a, like a let, one that's not as known. Type two diabetes. Really? Yeah, chromium and um, vanadium typically is type two diabetes and uh, it was cured. Oops. It was miracleized in animals in the 1950s. Through nutrition. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And okay. So that's, you know, like I talk about in the book, this is Dr. Wallach's work. And that's why he's so important to this clinic and a lot of nutritionists that he discovered the fixes in the animals. See, so he discovered through animals, like he was not only a veterinarian, but he worked on big farms with animals. I mean, and he became an animal researcher working for pet food companies because believe it or not, the, re the restrictions, I guess, or the, the regulations on pet food are really, really strict about that they have to, they have to contain that pets, whether it be a dog or a cat, complete nutritional profile, yep. right? And so he was the, they actually have more stricter standards than they do for human food, correct? That's correct. And that's why we have dogs living to 15 years old now. Cats right. and cats can live to 20. 
Right. Those foods that you get in the store, now maybe they are not using the best quality meat or ingredients, but they are supplementing them. Yeah. Can you imagine? Tons. Yeah. Can you imagine like a deer or a raccoon living until 20? I, I, you know, out in the wild, it's just the chances are so slim because right. they're they're fighting for their food. Even herbivores, they're I mean, they're out right. here in survival mode. But we take in dogs and cats, we supplement their nutrition and give them all this nutrition, and they live 15, 20 years. True. And so, Dr. Wallach discovered diseases in animals. He found diabetes in crocodiles, flamingos, uh, all sorts of animals. And when they start fixing it in the animals, it's like, let's try it with the humans. And it works. Right. Well, that's what you talk about that in the book, the animal and human connection. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we really are connected in a lot of ways that our biological profile in a lot of ways, as far as what we use, our blood what we use as fuel is very, very similar to what the animals need. We're all divinely designed. I, I think the difference is the animals are in the wild. Right. And so they have to fight for theirs. I mean, we do too, in a way. And that's why we have capitalism. That's, that's our fighting. Right. True. That's how we scrap and claw and get food on the table is we're, we're competing in capitalism. Right. And animals are competing in the wild. Right. But what we've done as humans is we've domesticated herbivores and then we take their milk and we eat their meat and we like right. that. And of course, Native Americans and our ancestors used them for the fur and their belts and the tools. And so animals have been very beneficial to humans um, through these centuries. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And, and I think what Dr. Wallach did was actually make that connection. You know what I mean? Like through studying the profile of, um, animals, he was able to transfer that over to humans and right. it worked, you know, he developed a lot of formulas and we can get it all into that, but you know, the formula you're talking about basically contains all the 90 essential nutrients, which includes the 60, uh, the 60 minerals, the 16 vitamins, the 12 amino acids, and the, the, uh, the two to three EFAs, right? So what that was his main thing, he developed this one stop drink. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a drink, it can also be, you know, capsules it just depends there's different ways for different people he made it so that people can have you know different ways depending on their situation and it's it's more than that too you know if somebody has gut issues then you know they need to be on even more supplements and of course that's going to cost more you know uh, type 2 diabetes would be a different protocol than someone with lupus let's say and so, you know, we have different protocols for different things. Yeah. So, you know, it just depends on what people need, really. You know, if somebody's deficient in enzymes and flora, you know, they're looking at allergies, athlete's foot, you know, belching, gas, heartburn, something like Crohn's or IBS, even yeast infections, you know, uh, if somebody's low and just bringing Joe back on here. I don't know why that keeps happening. It's all right. We just keep rolling. But you freeze. So that's it. Anyway. So yes, yeah, so Dr. Wallach developed this, this formula and that is pretty much the base of the Peace Over Pain program to make sure that you have uh, your 90 central nutrients as a base, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. And basically it's two drink powder mixes. 
Yeah. You mix them together with water and then there's a capsule, a pill and uh, EFA pill that goes along with it. Yep. Drink that drink once a day. And that gives you your 90 essentials, right? Yep. And then of course you have to be off the poor four foods. See, that's the that's, that's I was getting to the nutritional part of it. It's yeah. like, okay, don't think you're gonna go out and drink those 90 essentials, right? Yeah. And you're set. No, nope. and then you can go eat cake and nope. chicken wings and nope. you know all the bad foods because I got my 90 essentials. I'm good. So that that's the thing here at the Peace Over Pain Clinic it's non-negotiable so if if you want us to help you you have to get off the poor four foods otherwise you're wasting your money and we're wasting our time so we have to get off these poor four foods and of course we'll go into more detail in future episodes but oh yeah because people are gonna have a lot of questions about them once you name them off (laughs) but the, the gist of it is we have to open up the absorption so that the nutrients can get in Right. And there are certain foods that uh, inhibit absorption in a lot of ways, in a matter of a lot of like clog (laughs) in a lot of ways. Right. And that's why the poor four foods. I want to take a look at a P ray in a couple seconds, but why don't you just give them a little uh, idea of what those poor four are so then they can think about it. And, uh, and then next, maybe after we go over next week, the third module, then we will start talking about the poor four. Yeah. It's gluten, oil, fried and fake, gluten, oil, okay. fried and fake, gluten, oil, fried and fake. I'm, I started writing a song this weekend actually, so that we can get it in people's heads. Maybe we'll have sunlight, sunny do it, but gluten, oil, fried and fake. That's it right there. And if you have gut issues, then there's eight. Is poor eight, but we'll reserve that for another time for the episode on gut issues. But yeah, okay, so there's the poor four, those are foods you need to avoid, and like you said, non negotiable, non negotiable, non negotiable. You, you don't eat these foods, um, because even a small amount of them could be, you know, harmful to your body. Yeah, no, yeah, either. yeah, no cheating. And, you know, there's a lot more in depth, but I think we've covered uh, the clinical nutrition part. And again, if anybody has questions about it, please leave them down in the comments below or you want to. We've been waiting for guests. I I can't wait to talk to somebody. But anyway, we do have some questions to talk about after we talk. We look at the P-Ray. But yeah, I think it's very interesting. We can look at this uh, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about some people's questions. All right. All right, Rain, right away we got a P right here. What do you see? Right away, I see a rotation. Yep. I see an anterior pelvic tilt. Yep. I see a lot of work in that lumbar. Look at the hands. They're, they're, almost on her thighs because they're so rotated forward yeah but that shoulder is rolling forward wide stance to help her stand up like the eiffel tower yeah yeah there we go look at that yeah so what are we looking at there her center line we would love her feet to be closer to that line. We'd like her legs to be straight, but we really want that butt to drop down or that pelvis to go posterior a bit and then float back over her legs. That would help her out a ton to decompress that low back. And you, can, you, her, you, you can see the shoulder rotation from the back. I mean, you can't even see her hands. You can see her hands. You can Look see her watch. Yeah. So we, we know she's there. It's there. Uh, the hands are gone. You can also see for this individual, the hamstrings are weak, right? There's not a lot of tone right under the gluteal fold, but the glutes are strong. This tells us this pelvis uh, is unstable. If she was externally rotated, she could still be unstable, but she'd be really tight. Now, now we, we yeah. have some, we have a little bit of fat here. Why is it bigger on the right side than the left? Um, because it's not fat. It's actually a dysfunction of her erectors, her quadratus lumborum, and her obliques. Mm-hmm. So 
literally think of like if you threw out your beach towel and then it crinkled in one spot and the towel gets rumply that's what she's done her back is so tight she's rumpled her skin because it's not really fat it could be fat but it has a little bit of tone to it and that's where i say look at the spine right right in the center it's really working hard well then there yeah 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 right there is a lot there's a lot going on right there there could be some lymphatic fluid in there too right sure absolutely there could be lymphatic fluid all over her i mean for sure <coughs> excuse me okay the legs and the pelvis let's go there there's our plumb line so yeah. the plumb line is there so let's look at everything that is on the plumb line the ankle bone is on the plumb line well that's because you put it there the next one should be the knee, right behind the kneecap, but in front of the bones. It's almost like a slice. And she's not got that, right? You can see she's way behind the line. Then you go to her pelvis, and right again, where I was talking about those cute little butt cheeks, if you've ever seen on the kids, that's your gluteus medius or your lateral stabilizers. If you don't know, stand on one leg, you're going to feel it. Those are not working very well for her, so her bum should be in the center of that line. Right. And then that would lift her pelvis up, right? So things always work together. If her tail goes down, her abdominals will go up or her belly will lift up because everything moves as one. So it's not just tuck your tail, it's take your entire pelvis, move it on those femurs and get stable. But her femurs are so wide, we're gonna have to get those legs back in so that we can fix that dysfunction. But this, the symptom, we're gonna get to call that the symptom. The dysfunction is her rotation right now. So let's, if you could draw the other plumb line, yeah. I want you to see the rotation, especially look at how much we mentioned was behind the line on the right side. Now look at how much is in front of the line on the left side. Right. Like this is such a great visual. Like there's, mm. we can't argue about that. I don't know if you can draw two of them, but Again, the game is like when you're a kid, what's different in the picture? So Dr. Reese, what's different in this picture? What do you see? Yeah, look at the, the ear is forward from the line. Yes. The shoulder is on the line. Uh, it's a little forward. It's a little but forward. But compared to the other one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what we know for sure is they're not balanced. <laughs> no, not right? at all. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be on the line. Uh, her bum's a little better here. Her left side is a little bit better. You'll probably notice the more we do this, people tend to stack on their left, do on their right. Like a lot of externally rotated limbs on the right or gesture like all your moms who put their kin on that left hip, all the people who carry their bags. There's a, there's a, symptom that you'll see come up a lot a so because she's off balance she yes, has sir. the uh she has the wide stance yes she has to or she'll fall on her face right or honestly she won't fall on her face she'll spin her, her foot right should be right here. here yeah her foot the should right be... leg is not stable her left leg is her go-to leg the right leg is all about driving the car yeah that leg drives the car sits down, externally rotates, pushes the pedals. And then when she stands for long periods of time, she probably stands on her left leg. Yeah. But the potential is there. We have arches, we have great looking feet and toes. Yeah. I think once the pelvis becomes stable, the feet are gonna be a great asset because those are great looking feet. Yeah, she's pretty they're much just, straight. She's not averted too much at all. Yeah, they're just going the wrong way. Like. <laughs> right. I love looking from the back. If you draw the line from the center of the heel straight up, that's a really good way to see what's happening in the rotation slash alignment there. There you go. So, I mean, you can see that's not straight. Like, don't you just want to grab the left leg and kind of turn it back and put it where it's supposed to go? It's a little rolled in. Like we said, it's internally rolled in. This right. is not knock need. This is internal rotation. Right. Not knock need. Yeah. We can change this. Knock knee, your bones look like your bones, but this is just very weak pelvis muscles. 
Yeah, and, and she strong, she did uh, report to me that she has uh, back pain. So I I I actually am glad to hear that. <laughs> and I say that because pain is your source that your body is saying, "Hey, this hurts. Fix it." Right. I'm really glad she acknowledges that, and I'm really glad that it fits her profile because we can do a lot for her back pain. She's doing nothing but living in that back. It's really working hard for her. And that's going to affect everything. Your kidneys are right there. Your organs, like it's a big, it's a lot. I'm sure it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. So we need to get this young lady some postural Straight. therapy. And then the extension, like people say, well, what do you want to trade it up for? Stronger lateral glutes, stronger thoracic extension, so above and below, we're going to help above and below because the body is all one system. Right. All right. That was cool. Yeah, definitely was. Um, but uh, so I, I found it interesting last week we had a knock need person and this week we don't have a knock need person. Yeah. So now her next steps, obviously, she would get the uh, the results back from you. Yeah, I mean, she uh, she could do one on one postural therapy, or she could apply for our Peace Over Pain One Hundred and Twenty program, or she can just keep hanging out and uh, get Learning. as much free stuff as you can until she's ready. You know. Right, 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 right. And yeah, she can get started a little bit now, start with the nutrition, start working on that kind of stuff. All right, great. But to wrap up the nutrition part, so basically the clinical nutrition, you get tested, find out what your deficiencies are, see how they corroborate with your ailments, with your health issues, start on the 90 day essential program and eliminate the poor four foods. That's the basic of it in a nutshell, correct? Yeah, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. But getting tested costs too much money for some people. So we can so, just we can just assume that you're nutrient deficient based on your symptoms, you know, right based on your symptoms. So you don't necessarily need the blood test. And then there are also I notice on the website and in the book, there are also suggestions, dietary suggestions, you have recipes that they can get if they're worried about, oh, I got to cut these foods out, what am I going to eat instead? All kinds of good resources for the people, correct? Yeah. I think yeah, so. okay, good. Yeah, we're not going to just leave them hanging. So that's good to know. So why don't we get ready to take a few questions? We did get a few uh, after this word here. Have you read Peace Over Pain yet? This short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach. Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. That's right. That's right. Okay. So very, very good. Um, all right. First question of the day comes from Facebook. It's uh, comes from a young lady named Sarah. And she said that she saw what you said on your interview with Nancy Barrow about wood ash being used as a supplement by our ancestors. Should we include this in our lifestyle and how could you include it in your lifestyle? So that's an interesting question. Well, if you're already burning wood, then you certainly could stock up on some wood ash. But most people aren't burning wood. You know, they have a, a regular furnace, it's all electrical or gas. So it's not needed. Uh, you're better off doing the 90 essential nutrient supplement and getting off the poor four foods it is true that our recent ancestors not that long ago what 70 years ago maybe right right before 60 70 stoves, 80 years ago before electricity before electricity and even maybe the start of Heat electricity for heating right 
they burned, burned the wood. wood and they took the ash and they sprinkled it in their gardens to get more minerals in the food and then they sprinkled it on their food directly it should be noted that in the great depression people that were hit real hard they were making sawdust sandwiches right that sounds nuts but there's nutrients in wood because trees come from the ground right so that makes sense people but probably trees have a lot more nutrients than a small plant because they're so big it takes a lot mm -hmm. to make that wood grow strong first of all mm -hmm. and big and tall like that i mean that takes a lot of nutrients i'm sure trees are one of the biggest nutrient drainers of the soil but they are you know people don't understand how important trees are you know, as far as the overall uh, homeostasis. That's why, that's why the, I hug them and I name them. For me too. I talk to them all the time and I'm lucky. I'm lucky enough here to be surrounded by trees. I mean, I almost have a jungle around me. So it's very, very nice. But yeah. And also I think maybe diet to meet just earth. If you're looking for that kind of supplement, you know, you don't necessarily have to go get a pile of wood, burn it and right. then use the ash you can actually buy diet to meet your earth and you know if somebody was smart they'd start marketing wood ash but i will <laughs> keep that <laughs> i mean yeah. it's a pretty easy resource to get it is <laughs> but yeah i wouldn't like this this lady asked uh i wouldn't go out of my way and you know throw wood ash in my food it, it's more of a they didn't have supplements back then that's just what they did instinctually to it's been passed down through yeah. years and years and years you know people don't understand you know they think the native americans are the only ones who had you know folk medicines but there are plenty of folk medicines that were passed down through the english through the different uh, other nationalities that came here you know mm -hmm. folk medicine is nothing new as a matter of fact people used it for years before big pharma so <laughs> you know uh, big pharma hasn't been around that long no not barely a hundred years dude i know the whole history someday we'll talk about it <laughs> okay joanna on facebook my hair is falling out she asked her primary care physician to check her nutrients. They said that her iron B12 and D were fine, which of course is what they check for, right? Iron B12, D, those are the big ones. Could it still be a deficiency? And if so, what would the deficiency be? She is losing her hair. Well, they only check three or four and there's 87, 86 more nutrients to check. So that's a good example of what the medical monopoly does. And of course, the physician doesn't know any better. So the physician can't give this woman an answer. Right. Which pretty much makes know. the physician, dare I say, useless. Unless and, you have a broken arm. <laughs> yeah. So you know, hair falling out or alopecia is typically from a gut issue. When the gut is messed up, you know, the body has to pull nutrients from somewhere and there's always nutrients in your hair and your nails. And, you know, it, it, it can just zap your hair. And once it starts pulling nutrients out of your hair, you know, it, it's, it goes bye-bye. So this is just came to me uh, uh, being a uh, hair, hair deficient. Uh, are you saying that I possibly had a nutrient deficiency that made my hair fall out and that male pattern baldness, the thing that people have been trying to cure for years could actually be a nutritional deficiency and not testosterone, too much testosterone like they tell you or whatever? I would say it's possible, but there's no guarantee on that. Right. What is the difference between what this woman is going through and let's say what male pattern baldness is? Well, ma male pattern baldness, I mean, you would know probably around 30 years old. Like, right. Were, were you losing your hair at around 30? 20, 26, 27. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 
you know, you, you make a pretty good. Uh, okay, right. So let's say I was awake and aware back then, and women I women are different. Women, women are different. They typically don't lose their hair. They unless, thin. Right, right. They thin, but they don't go bald. Right. Correct. So she, she has a gut issue more than likely. It could be SIBO. It could be, you know, Crohn's something. She's something's wrong in the gut. And, and then an autoimmune response typically happens. And so that's what leads to things like lupus and rheumatoid and all these autoimmune disorders and the hair falling out sort of just comes along with that. It's a symptom. It's a, a symptom, but it's not the cause by any means. And then also it could just be a flat out nutritional deficiency, just a flat out nutritional deficiency. Right. I mean, they always say, what is it? Biotin is a big one for the biotin hair, Biotin is right? a big one. Yeah, sure. Right. And that's what they always used to tell me, take biotin. But no, my, what I was getting at before with the male pattern baldness is if you maybe if you start noticing that you are going bald at a young age, the, the early signs of it, maybe start thinking about upping your nutrition, you know, maybe just think about it as a, a fail safe to see if it stops falling out at, at, a, at a long, a large rate. You know, maybe if men tried that as preventative, it could work. Yeah, essential fatty acids would would be involved in that. Selenium would be involved in that. Um, and you could look at your feet. Some right. people have like big cracks on their feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They associate that with uh, maybe walking too much or something. But or dry that, skin, they'll put lotion on it. Right. Yeah, that's essential fatty acids and selenium could be directly involved with that as well as well as the bio, biotin and things like that. Right, right. So there is hope for people if you're, if you're losing your hair. And uh, I hope that answered uh, the question. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen, I've never seen a complete reversal on male balding. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people getting patches and then it comes back but never like a complete, like, like what you have. I've never seen that. But that didn't start like that. <laughs> but, gray, but gray hair definitely is reversible. Really? Yes. That is a deficiency. Gray hair is, a, if, if you're gray and you're not 60 years old or older, then it's more than likely 99% a deficiency. Wow. Well, that's, uh, well, I didn't go till I was a little older. So, but I'm sure Kevin, before I was on the program, I was loaded with deficiencies, and, which is and, why I got on the program. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm an example of that I was, I was getting gray hair in my early twenties. Right. And I also have varicose veins and it's all associated with the same, same nutrient. Oh, wow. What one is that? It's copper. Copper. Okay. Wow. We're, yeah, we're going to get more deep into all these nutrients and everything as we go along, but uh, it's very interesting stuff. Yeah. All right. So this is Dana on IG. Uh, this is funny because we kind of mentioned it. Can I have a cheat meal with gluten in it? And I think we just talked about the poor four and how they're non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, it's a big fat no. The problem is, and this happened to me recently, Joe, I had something with gluten in it by accident. I broke one of my rules of eating right. out. I, I don't eat out. It's one of my rules. I, I don't either. I, I make I, my I own, food, make my own I food. I made that mistake. This is probably four months ago, three months ago. And my stomach was torn up for a week. You... Once you get off gluten, only then can you understand. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. Only then, because then if you introduce it back, it's like, oh, buddy. And I'm not celiac. I'm not. No, they, uh, yeah. Gluten. You don't have to be. Celiac is just, 
an allergy, basically. Yeah, and, I, and, and we can get into how that allergy developed because let's be real, we have been subsisting on wheat for ages yep. without very many digestive issues. Now, the yep. last 20 or 30, 40 years, you've been seeing cases of people coming up with this disease called celiac. Mm -hmm. which is a gluten intolerancy. And it's pretty severe. If they eat gluten, they literally throw up, they go to the diarrhea, their body can't handle it. Whereas they could before. What the cause of it is, is obviously factory farming again, and genetically modified wheat. We're yeah. back to that same thing where the food we used to eat is not the same as the food we get today. And if people don't know, wheat, corn, and soy are the three most genetically modified foods in, out there. Mm -hmm. um, and because they have genetically modified the wheat, the levels of gluten that are in the wheat have gone up. And it, not only that, it is not natural gluten. Right. So, right. The word glue, and this is why you see the allergies coming up with people because their body is like, this is not wheat. This is something else, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's become, if, it, if there's an allergy, it also has come to light now that because of the high gluten levels in the wheat now, it's become a problem with people's uh, nutrition, you know, and it's something that people should stay away from. Yeah, And it's, it's, you know, when you talked about the poor four, I said, I know people are going to get upset with gluten because they'd love to eat bread and they love pizza. You know, I'm sure when pasta. she's asking about the cheap meals, she's thinking, God, pasta. I would love a pizza or a pasta or, pasta. Some Who bread or a cake. Pasta, right? I love pasta, but guess what? They Not make gluten-free pasta if you really want it. Yeah. Don't cook it in oil. But, or just use tomato sauce or butter, but they make gluten-free pasta. They make gluten-free pizza crust. They make gluten-free bread. They make gluten-free flour to make cake from. The only so, problem, the only problem is a lot of these companies then throw oil in it. So the poor four just knocks you right out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you kind of got to cook yourself. You that, know. That's exactly it is, is you, know. you have to, and you know, we'll talk about it later, but that's why I'm, I'm a big advocate of pressure cookers and just air fryers, you, pressure cookers, right. You, you can make great food. I mean, I've made food that blows my family away. I'll bring the pressure cooker to the family party. To the table. Right, right, right. And, you know, because nobody eats right away, right? You socialize for an hour. So I just cook the food in the pressure cooker. Wow, it's so fresh, right? And they're just like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. And so, you know, you don't have to go to restaurants and, and get packaged food at grocery stores. You just don't. It's not necessary. Right. Getting and off if, the four is the best thing you can do. And if you do... There are, what I'm saying is there are options out there now. We live in a different world than we did 20 years ago. People are much more aware of the gluten factor. Yep. They're much more aware that there are more people on a vegan lifestyle. So there are a lot more options open for people. And of course, this is something you taught me a while ago, but it's read the ingredients. If you're going to buy the gluten-free cauliflower crust for your pizza, read the ingredients. Yeah, if, if you're if you're more than five, right? <laughs> yeah, if you're committed to being off of the poor four foods, you have to read the ingredients. Right, because you, it, the rule of thumb is no more than five ingredients, right? Yeah. Or if you start seeing names that you can't pronounce, yeah, put it back on the shelf, you know, because it's it's what is the fake food, the processed food. That's but I, fake. ideally, you want to eat one ingredient foods. Right. Yeah. No, ideally you would want to eat a vegetable, a fruit or, or something else. Yeah. And, and, and that's something that's tough for people to understand, but you know, I don't even know if the concept of a cheat meal 
is even it's not really in my vocabulary i don't know about you but i don't really have them no not really i mean i have i have popcorn once a week there's a cheat yeah i mean it's um air popped and it's organic no, no butter on it right no i got ghee all over it you put it on though it's not that fake sprayed but no 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 i'm <laughs> i'm melting ghee all over it right but that's my i i wouldn't call it a cheat it's part of my lifestyle i have it once a weekend right it's the only salty crunchy thing i have right right so i mean we all have our things that we but it's two ingredients it's popcorn and, and, and the ghee in yeah. the e, that's it yeah so that's ideally the way you want to go as as whole and natural as possible and yeah you can get to the point where you make your own pasta if you want to and I dr mean, you, wallach dr wallach just, on, on my podcast he gave his whole diet and he eats he eats ice cream he eats pizza, pizza. yeah it's <laughs> just gluten-free pizza yeah yeah so he doesn't have a problem he makes it himself though if you notice so yeah but um so you know there's ways and again the book says it so no you cannot have a cheat meal with gluten in it you will regret it okay mm -hmm. so that's your answer dana we are sorry <laughs> <laughs> all right so the last question is here from vanessa. vanessa and vanessa wants to know is anxiety a nutritional def deficiency mm. Well, it can be most certainly, but I would also want to look at the posture and see if maybe there's some nerves that are pinched. You know, the vagus nerve is big with anxiety. You know, posture matters. Uh, nutritional deficiencies definitely in there. You know, you got to look at the chromium. You got to look at the chromium and the vandium. But the big thing with anxiety is almost always, Joe, is going to be mindfulness. If you, uh, if you lose control of your imagination, then you're in trouble. So uh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So it could be any of those things. And in the book, Peace Over Pain, I lay out all the different things that could be causing anxiety and other disorders so as to prove the point that it's the three macro methods that create the miracle of getting rid of these health burdens sometimes it's not just one thing it right. could be three things causing the anxiety right she could have a posture issue and a nutritional issue and she could need to practice mindfulness but anxiety is a symptom of fear so she's scared of something right and so there's something there's something in the subconscious mind more than likely that she needs to clean out right right and that's where we're going to talk about next week mm -hmm. when we get into mindfulness and that's you know, mindfulness is one of my one of my favorite topics. I've been practicing meditation for years, and I know you have as well. And I have found it to help my life. But again, nobody's perfect. You know, it's a practice. You have to do it. I, you don't just meditate once and think you're enlightened. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a practice and you lay out specific different practices that you have found to work. And, and we're going to talk about that next week. So that's pretty exciting, but um, I did want to wrap it up and thank everybody for tuning in today. Remember to leave your questions for Dr. Reese in the comments or anywhere in the Facebook group. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, please do and tell your friends all about it. Like and share, share the Peace Over Pain, um, share the Peace Over Pain group and uh let's and, let's get this going and then same thing all of our social media dr reese you can follow him you can follow me on social media and uh and read the book ladies read and the book read it's the only 495 so with that i will will sign off we'll see you next week and we'll be talking about mindfulness 
Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.